Hey guys, Prim here. Welcome to my Vainglory tutorial guide. So with the influx of new kind of content creators slash streamers and kind of new players that I've been in contact with after the release of Vainglory on Steam, I had the idea of making a bit of a tutorial video on breaking down each role and kind of what the general purpose of the or the aim of each role as you go on throughout the game. Because I remember when I was starting um, playing Vainglory and I felt quite lost on what to do in the game. And obviously I got um, I got toxic responses by people and, and everything as I, as I was trying to improve in the game. But I do remember that feeling of not being sure what to do. And that was back in 3v3. We're in 5v5 where it's a lot bigger. There's a lot more roles. So it's definitely somewhat important to know what you're doing. And to preface um, uh, kind of before I get into the video, I'm not um, kind of a scoundrel when it comes to the technical side of Vainglory. I'm not kind of max man when it comes to the numbers and every every single detail, let's say the patch notes. I just know from playing the game that roughly what each role does and from shoutcasting where and, and at one point in the game it can become... A strong advantage to do um, what I'm going to talk about so on that note I hope you enjoyed the tutorial I've tried to keep it short as po possible have fun and see you guys on the rise soon when you're looking at top laning in Vainglory right now in the 4.0 meta you want to kind of go for uh, overall a, a quite a tanky hero that does a bit of bruiser slash burst damage. Uh, very viable heroes right now are Lance, Grump Jaw, um, Arden a little bit, but not so much. Uh, even Adagio, who isn't, who although isn't naturally tanky, has the healing of the gift of fire, which is going to do work. Also, I find Catherine is quite decent um, against certain heroes. And even the likes of Reza. You can go um, squishier, more burst damage heroes. Uh, Melina is also very good because she does burst damage and he's, a he's able to get away. But her kit, you need to really know how to get the most out of it. Um, but you can go other heroes like even Gwen, Ringo, if you do want to. Just be definitely a little bit careful. But the main role I find of, of top lane is just to stay safe. Be a little bit passive, do a bit of damage as you can on the enemy bottom laner and to kind of go about on the game. So the way you want to start is you just want to start by, the way I do it at least is by doing a scout cam. I do also start on my um, my healing treat um, and itemization you want to start with when it comes to top laner would be something along the lines of Bucky Eulogies and either a Weapon Blade or a, um, or a Tier 1 Armor. The reason why is because generally the enemy bottom laner tends to be a, a weapon based hero. It, it kind of comes down to personal choice. So when you're going in, um, you just want to try and last hit the minions for the first you know couple of minutes, look to clear the wave um, how you can, but not get put under pressure. Top lane is about not basically feeding, so you don't want to feed the enemy bottom laner. It's very simple when it comes to top lane positioning. Play a little bit safe, do a bit of damage. If you feel you're getting the better of the enemy bottom laner um, that you're going up against, do a good bit of damage. If you can get a kill, perfect. But otherwise, generally play safe because what you might find is you don't want to get ganked by the enemy jungler and the bot laner together. So that's where also scout cam positioning helps. So that's why I generally place one scout cam there and I try to place a scout cam either there or there. Now, when you place a scout cam in that bush, normally there's an enemy scout cam there, so it can kind of get wasted. But if you place it somewhere there or even in the river, you can have an idea of when the enemy laner or enemy captain is going to go up to support their bot laner to attempt to gank you that's generally the top laner's role in the first five to six minutes of the game so 
So, when you're looking at mid lane, uh, there's a few heroes that are really meta right now in the mid lane. Uh, very much so, the meta heroes in the mid lane would be Celeste, Samuel, Scarf, uh, Magnus, and even Meline. I would definitely put up there. Uh, Sky, I think, is is a little bit down below. Um, but I definitely also think she's underutilized. Varia is not as she's very weak, weak early game, so she does require a lot compared to other heroes and her just her damage output just isn't there compared to other mid laners right now in the meta um those are generally your, your heroes you want to aim for um so let's pick up celeste now with um with the with the mid lane role you are nearly always you should nearly always look to be supported by um your captain throughout the first six seven eight minutes of the game it's about trying to get as much cs as possible as is kind of generally the the point of of the early game in vainglory completely um it's about getting all of that cs as much as you can when you are playing mid lane and you're playing a hero like celeste she has a generally weak early game because of the weak um, range on her helios it's only when she hits level 8 that she becomes a lot more powerful with the extra range on her helios you'll be able to zone the enemy a little bit more um, with the helios going into the supernovas and then obviously once she picks up good damage you then um, want to look to burst on that the general build path for most um mid laners right now is spellfire going into broken myth dragon's eye or dragon's eye broken myth or even tier three boots tier three boots is really um popular right now the reason why is because uh the extra move speed buff that got onto that got given to boots in the last patch i think it was 3.9 patch it means that when you pick up tier 2 boots and even halcyon chargers uh it means that you're able to get obviously the improved cooldown with halcyon chargers and also you uh, get that extra movement speed which when it comes to mid lane especially where you have enemies in that bush and then coming from that bush potentially you're able to dodge away from that damage just a little bit easier and you're able to stay quite safe especially when you are playing a late game hero such as celeste you do want to try to capture the mid treant the crit sorry the crystal treant as soon as it does spawn up normally that is for jungler but in my opinion in the early game you do want to let it go over to the mid laner um the reason why is because it's going to help increase her chances of doing damage onto the enemy mid laner and um providing that extra lead with the c with the cs improvements with the itemization when you get ahead of your mid laner when it comes to both cs and um kills and itemization you're able to really um help dictate the pace of the game come the seven eight ten minute mark when the dragons start to spawn and um rotations become a lot more important but mid lane kind of similar to top lane is just about getting up that farm creating that cs advantage for yourself when you are putting scout cams like i said about earlier with the with the enemies coming from both sides if you can get a um scout cam in that bush early try to keep it as close to your side of the lane as much as possible the reason why is because there's it makes it harder for the enemy to take out your scout cam if you have the opportunity of taking out their scout cam do it otherwise try not put, to put yourself under too much risk as i said generally when it comes to the um captain the captain's role right now in the 4.0 meta for the first uh good few minutes of the game is to stay by the mid laner side help keep uh, that hero protected and then um come into later stage rotate in appropriate timing so when you're looking at bottom lane in the 4.0 meta generally the really strong bot laners 
right now um and you 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 normally want to go for a weapon power damage dealer in the bottom laner the reason was because you're able to really cs off quite nicely you're able to really get that lead and, and focus onto the enemy top laner quite effectively uh it, it's just the way the kind of meta goes however you can go cp if you wish just be aware of the rest of the comp that, that you have on your team but right now the meta bot laners right now are baron gwen kinetic and um, Ringo. Where is the one-handed boy that is Ringo? Other heroes that can be played um, and are generally a little bit lower meta-wise, I feel, and Otto would, would agree, closely followed by Kestrel. Um, Weapon Barris Guy, I think, is, is to be underestimated, but her skill cap is quite high. And then Silver Nail followed behind. Silver Nail just not as much damage but provides a great zoning tool for team fights come later in the game never and i repeat never pick saw never you will see saw being played a lot in the lower tiers if you're new um so good luck it is e easy to deal with the saw just build atlas um otherwise don't play saw Never ever ever play so and I'm looking at you Mr. Tian stress. Otherwise, let's get into the game I'm gonna pick up Gwen because I generally like Gwen myself um, and I love her. I love her skins as well, so I'm gonna sound a little bit like a broken record um, but bot laning is similar to mid and top CS Gotta get that CS baby. You gotta get those last hits on your wave you do not want to rotate up to jungle. Oh, and normally, in my opinion, start with two weapon blades. You do start with 600 gold, um, as you will be aware. Either two weapon blades or a book eulogies and a weapon blade, depending on how comfortable you feel in the game and, and how comfortable you feel being, let's say, more aggressive than normal. Never take the jungle with the jungler because, sorry, wrong ping. And you never take the jungle with the jungler because you do not receive ambient gold. So you want to go straight to lane. I tried to put a scout cam there and there. Maybe there instead of that bush there. Because that bush can be a little bit obvious. So the enemy top laner can put a bush in there and then yours can be taken out. So otherwise try to put one there. And once again maybe somewhere in the middle of the river. So you want to focus on taking the CS. Now, with bot laning, like I said, CS is really important, but if you feel they're getting the better of your top laner, um, of the enemy top laner, look to go a very aggressive on him. Look to push him back and stop him from um, getting CS by pushing his minion wave underneath his turret, or should I say your minion wave underneath his turret. Makes it hard for him to get CS, and it makes it easier for you to level up. If you do want to join the, your jungler after he, after he does his first rotation, depending on if you're solo queue or otherwise, you can go here to take the enemy healing tree. And otherwise, generally stay in lane and put pressure. You're going to be on your own. If your jungler feels that there's an opportunity to gank the enemy top laner with you, do that. Otherwise, just CS, stay effective, stay strong, and put that pressure on the enemy top laner. It's as simple as that until we get, like I said, into the six, seven, eight minute mark of the game. Cool. So, captains right now um, that are strong in the 4.0 meta. And I'm going to repeat 4.0 meta because generally every patch give or take the meta changes of heroes between buffs and nerfs so i'm highlighting 4.0 meta because that's what it is currently and the hero meta will obviously change but i believe for quite a while the play method of each role will kind of stay the same um i feel like vainglory is and a lot of people would agree it's at a good place right now anyway captains so the meta captains right now are churnwalker um, but usually it gets banned in draft. Yates, Lorelei, 
Adagio and Lyra and Finn. Then followed by also Lance and Arden. I actually think other than Fortress and Flicker, every support hero is kind of strong right now. I'm going to highlight Adagio and Lyra more because with the removal of Iron Guard Contract, if you joined the game recently, there was an I where you saw Iron Guard Contract. It gave it, it gave you healing every time um, your the laner that you're with took CS. So it helped um, heal him, heal yourself. And it just made it more sustainable. But Iron Guard contract got removed. So there's no actual healing there for you outside of you using Flask. Or having a book you use and taking CS. So it does make the likes of Adagio and Lyra a bit more stronger. Because they naturally have healing as part of their kit. Um, like with Lyra you have the Imperial Sigil which does heal up. Um, a heal nearby ally and yourself and then with the Dagio you have um, the gift of fire which heals up uh, gives a burst of health to your ally or yourself so that does make those heroes just a little bit more viable compared to others but the risk in some way with the likes of Dagio and Lyra is that um, they're not as naturally tanky themselves so it does put them under risk but they're ranged heroes so they're you know so I'm once again gonna go for Arden because Arden is my boy and he is playing more in the captain role compared to um, other roles right now. So when it comes to playing captain, like I mentioned with the mid lane, right now um, it, it is stay in the mid lane. Baby your mid laner, um, protect them, look to heal them up. Help them get CS and look to put pressure on the mid enemy mid laner and the enemy captain. Um, it, it is really important that you stay by their side. The only way, the o not the only way, but in my opinion, um, the only safe time it is to stay away from, to get away from your mid laner is when they've gone back or your jungler comes up to gank, gets a successful gank, and you can move up to the top lane to support them or move down to the bottom lane to put support um, those other lanes. Otherwise, the captain role is just to stay in mid lane. When you're looking at itemization for the first um, couple of minutes, and I won't talk too much about itemization, but I do want to highlight captain because... Um, I think it is really important. Generally, most captains start with... Uh, actually, no. Starting items on captains are more versified with the removal of Iron Guard contract. When you're looking at the different contracts, you have Dragon Blood, which basically um, you hit a basic attack and it applies 35% slash 20% depending on melee or range. Slow for one second onto that enemy hero. And it does give that health. But the benefit with something like a protector contract is that after using an ability your next next basic attack against an enemy hero will grant 150 barrier to nearby allies for two seconds i found personally from my experience that dragon ball blood contract is really good for being a bit more aggressive in mid lane as captain yes you don't technically help your mid laner per se but what that can do is and i'll talk about another item that is popular on captains right now is it can help by you being aggressive onto the enemy mid laner with the likes of a dragon blood contract providing that slow can help secure a kill onto the enemy mid laner so if you apply that slow and you're with the sless and the sless hits a core collapse and then followed by helio that can really help take down an enemy mid laner something like that or if you're with the Lorelei you go in with the dragon blood contract fish food etc so stuff like that can really make a positive difference on the support hero but the other item that's also really popular and on um um captains right now is storm guard banner it's similar principle um only instead of providing a slow it's just basically um it deals a chunk of damage to the enemy 
um, hero or or enemy um, or an enemy minion. Uh, part of the reason, like I said, similar to Dragon Blood Contract, is is not that it heals the enemy per se, but it makes the enemy mid laner or the enemy hero back off. So it makes them a bit more passive, which gives your mid laner a chance to CS just a little bit cleaner. So when you look to let's say engage with something like the Storm Guard. Banner, it's not that you're trying to directly get a kill, but you're trying to create space. So let's say you're here and your mid laner is here and the enemy mid laner is there and he's kind of looking to engage onto the onto your mid laner there. But you going in on the Iron Guard contract and doing a chunk of damage, you might not be healing your mid laner that's there, but what you're doing is you're actually forcing that enemy mid laner to kind of go, whoa, that's a little bit of damage coming from that captain. I better back off. He backs off. The minion wave that let's say there gives your mid laner more room to actually clear that freely. Therefore, you're helping your mid laner get CS. So Captain Roll, first six minutes is just to keep the mid laner alive. Rotate up if you really feel you can without harming your mid laner, great. Otherwise, babysit them, look to stay by their side support. Build paths for captains um, right now is kind of something along the lines of Crucible, Fountain, War Threads. But also you can go Crucible, War Threads, Fountain. It depends on how far into the game, and how, far, how much of a lead you have in the game and what composition you are. So that's a little bit deeper but i'm trying to keep this um tutorial generally quite simple but still giving you a, a bit of a direction when it comes to posi positions and what role you're playing in the game so that's captain so, scout cams because you're going to be with your mid laner there's going to be four scout cams so that's definitely a positive but obviously the enemy um team are also going to force scout cams so also try to put one there and i would try to i've put one there as captain when I feel it's comfortable because that normally a jungler can go there followed by there and then try and gank your mid laner that's kind of like there so if you have one in there a scout camp really do give a little bit of an early warning of where the enemy team are can help with communication with positioning help stop that feeding good job you're doing your captain role nicely so when you're looking at junglers um and the jungle role, it's 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 in my opinion the role that is most um shapeful in terms of the hero that you play. So it it, it does depend on what the enemy composition. So to a certain extent, as much as there there's meta junglers out there, ju picking the jungle role last can really help give an edge over your enemy team. So and also it depends on what kind of jungler you are and what kind of composition you have for the rest of your team. So one of the main jobs of the jungler is obviously to get onto the back line of the enemy team. So it does make certain heroes generally a bit stronger and a bit more viable. Right now you're looking at Grumjaw. You're looking at, um, maybe I'm, um, yeah, Taka. Very strong right now. Koshka, I definitely think, is a little bit underutilized. Um, I was watching a Scoundrels video and he actually tore it up as Koshka. Uh, but he's a really decent player. But you have to be aggressive and can't be passive, especially early game. Also, followed by kind of Rhyme, um, Ilva, definitely, I think, is useful. Um, and then Anka. Those are really kind of um, backline aggressive heroes that can really work well on the squishy targets. So just Celeste, Gwen, Ringo, even Baron. Especially early game when you want to shut down the Baron. But if you're looking to play, oh yeah, and Grumpjaw as well. Um, I don't know if I mentioned Grumpjaw, but Grumpjaw as well. But if you're looking to play a bit more of a utility um, jungler that's helping to kite the rest of your team, if you have a, a team that's looking to kite away from the enemy team, Somebody like a Batiste, um, Arden, that's very mobile, but also does a decent bit of burst damage. 
Um, Ilva as, as well. Actually, Ilva also because um, her kit, I think, is really decent. Um, and then even even somebody like a Chermwalker. Not as common, but I'm going to throw it out there. Maybe I'm wrong. Pairing up with people, if you do want to jungle as a main, in my opinion, you definitely want to be in, be in a party of people of two or three or even a five man queue. The reason why is because communication is so key as a jungler. So, with the rotations and, and with the jungle role right now, it's, it, and the way changes were made, as a lot of people have talked about, uh, the jungler is all for the jungler. Nobody else gets ambient. Whoever last hits that um, jungle creep, whether it's the gold oak or the weapon tree, gets that gold. So it does leave open the the jungler to really have its own role. So in the first couple of minutes and five six minutes of the jungler's um, role is again it's going to depend on playstyle and where you want to direct. If you feel along with your bottom laner, which is why I think being in a party is quite important as a jungle role, but that's not always the case if you solo queue. But if you feel that you can get a gang on the bot laner early stage of the game, I would start on the gold oak, followed by weapon trained, followed by healing trained, maybe ignore and go straight for the gank. Because that's a, it's an obvious lead. So you're going basically from, it, it, it's a, it's a, you know it's a stepping stone that to that to that to the gank in the bot lane lovely position and that means you can then potentially go into the enemy jungle there take that tree and all that jazz but if you want to go let's say for a mid lane gank in the first couple of minutes in my opinion start at the barrier tree and go into the weapon tree and going into the gold oak going straight there that's what you know it's gonna it's gonna slightly vary but that's what i would kind of recommend roughly just go based on you know you gotta have with with jungler you gotta have a direction in mind in the front you can't wander wander uh, uh, mindlessly around the map you've got to have uh, you know a next step in my opinion now it might change based on how the rest of your team are doing in various lanes but you got to have a bit of a direction you got to have a go okay look i'm gonna go this into this into here and go on and just go based on instincts going back to um Excalibur's video he did similar things like that and it paid off for him because he was acting on instinct on instinct on how the game was going but also having a bit of a general direction itemization at the start always and i mean always right now until the item changes storm guard banner first item when you start off 600 gold goes straight into storm guard banner that's it 100 percent, you will not regret picking the item on jungle makes it a lot easier to clear wave in the jungle makes it a lot quicker to go into go for a gank it's a snowball effect as far as tier 3 items you want to obviously go for a tier 3 damage item depending on if you're crystal power or weapon power and what hero you're playing but second item i would always recommend go for either journey boots or housing chargers journey boots over housing chargers simply being because um depending on the hero you're playing simply because with journey boots is you 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 activate them and when you hit um when you hit an enemy hero within a certain time frame i'm not exactly sure what that time frame is but within i believe it's the first 10 seconds or five seconds when you hit an enemy the cooldown of the boots go from 75 seconds to 10 seconds so you essentially potentially have tier three boots every 10 seconds that can be a game changer as a jungler rotating from lane to lane ganking becoming a nuisance and that is the role of the jungler right now in the first six to eight minutes of the game is the gank from basically bottom to mid to top also don't be afraid to support that top laner help him get his cs help him not get 
fed by the enemy team. So that can also be really important. So those are your five um, roles. Briefly, in my, I hope so at least, explain on what to do in the first six to eight minutes of the game. So you kind of go, well, what about after that Imperium? What do I do after that? It becomes all about team fights and team rotations after about the eight minute mark between six to ten minutes maybe a little bit further depending on your composition it becomes all about essentially four to five man team rotations three at the minimum five obviously at the max about team wide rotations so what that means is that basically let's say the bottom laner has secured the bot lane turret that essentially frees up and obviously secures a wave along the way what that means is that basically means the bot laner and the jungler can instantly go into the mid lane creating a four man push with the mid laner and the captain to secure that mid lane whether it's taking out the mid lane hero whether it's taking out the turret that's security that's an objective secured within the first that's two objectives secured potentially in the first six minutes of the game then you think ghostwing ghostwing has spawned if you have taken out let's say you've ganked as a three to four man team and you have a decent bit of um vision around the area go for that ghostwing take it secure it. make sure that you're aware because early stages of the game you're not going to have a lot of damage on your side which is why it is imperative to do it as a four to five man team secured take it in it's a bit of a snowball effect what that does is it helps maintain map control when you can control the waves and control the lanes and control the rotation of the map after the first six to eight minutes of the game it stops the enemy team from essentially getting back into the game it creates a psychological effect of the enemy team going we can't get back into this because what you're doing is you're constantly going into a fight any kind of engagement as a four to five man team you're going into every single objective as a four or five man team i recently casted a game where dvi the team dvi were playing and they were poetic with their five man rotations even earlier into the game but ma mainly because they had that lead but they did it as soon as they had a chance to rotate as a five man team they did it because they had the confidence that even if they did lose a wave let's say in the top lane and if they did lose a turret in the top lane because the top laner moved down What's more important, losing a top lane or gaining a mid lane or gaining a ghost wing? In my opinion, 100% gaining the mid lane or gaining a ghost wing. Easily important. It's not always about protecting that wave when it comes to um, the top lane at least, even the bottom lane and even the mid lane at worst. But it's all about the team wide rotations late game. It's so important for you within your team, whether it's solo queue, whether it's two man party, three man party, or five man party, to really get into the mindset of, we need to rotate as a team. Are you always going to do it? No, God, no. Sometimes you have the best intentions to rotate as a five man team, and it just doesn't happen. But when it does, and you get off that team fight, and you win it man it feels good because you instantly go and you go okay let's go to this objective i know this video is long i try to keep it as short as possible and i hope i have summed up each role in a basically easy way that will not make you feel as lost in the game thank you for listening and i hope you enjoy vainglory if you're a newcomer have fun and see you on the rise.